This is a brain from above. You can see left and right hemispheres. Can you imagine what would happen if we cut the connection between them? Could you cope? Would you even notice? In this episode of Psych Boost, Split Brain Research. Let's quickly review the brain as viewed from above. Your brain is contralateral. So this means there's a region on the left side of your brain that centers and moves the right side of your body. And on the right side, there's an area that centers and moves the left side of your body. Now, importantly for the research we're about to discuss, the right side of your brain deals with visual information in the left side of your visual field, taken from the optic nerves of both eyes. And the left side of your brain deals with visual information from the right side of your visual field. Also, the language centers, the areas responsible for speech, are located only in the left side of the brain. There is a connection between the left and right hemispheres. This is called the corpus callosum. It's a thick bundle of 200 to 300 million nerve fibers, allowing quick communication between each side. If we could cut this connection, it would stop communication between each hemisphere and show how each hemisphere is specialized. Of course, cutting this connection in human brains is not something we could do for scientific curiosity. But as extreme as it sounds, it was a surgical procedure for the treatment of severe epilepsy. The idea was to stop the electrical seizure from bouncing between the hemispheres and so significantly reducing the number of fits. Patients reported very few side effects from the procedure, aside from being a strange sense of being two people in one body. A researcher called Sperry in 1969 studies a group of people who had had their corpus callosum cut in a set of studies called split brain research. In Sperry's divided field experiment, participants would sit at a screen, cover one eye and ask to look at a dot. He could then flash words or images independently to the right and left visual fields. So try this yourself, focus on the dot. The word key was delivered to your left hemisphere and saw to your right. Now for you, your entire brain knows what was on the screen as your corpus callosum has shared the information. But this can't happen for split brain patients. If, for example, the patients were shown the words key to the right visual field and saw to the left, patients could say key as the information was in the left hemisphere, the side of the language centers. While the word saw couldn't be spoken, the right hemisphere has control of the left hand and could draw a saw. Or in a tactile version of the study, pick up an object shown to the right hemisphere with a left hand from a choice of objects. In a version of the study, Gazina showed different faces to each visual field. When shown the faces again, faces shown to the right hemisphere were recognized. This demonstrates the right hemisphere is better at recognizing faces. Let's consider some evaluations of Sperry's research using split brain patients. The sample used was small, and we may not want to generalize these findings to the wider population from such a small sample, as their brains may be abnormal in other ways, ways we're not aware of. Also, the comparison group used by Sperry were not people with a history of epileptic fits, so we wouldn't consider them a valid comparison. Another criticism is the patients used did not all have the same level of disconnection between the hemispheres. This could have resulted in more communication between the hemispheres than suggested. Another criticism is these patients had undergone drug therapy, some for longer periods than others, and potentially this drug treatment could have influenced the results. We could also criticize this experiment as lacking in mundane realism. These effects only really show up in a highly artificial situation. In the real world, the cutting of the corpus callosum is easily dealt with by moving the eye so both hemispheres have access to the information. The overriding positive of this research though, is how it is added to our understanding of what consciousness is. Suggested we're not one unified self, but possibly a collection of separate intelligent processes all working together. 
this has affected both our psychological and our philosophical understanding of the mind. I hope you enjoyed this video on Sperry. It's always been one of my favourite psychological studies. I did a combined psychology and philosophy degree and used Sperry in my philosophy dissertation. Even now it helps me think more deeply about who I really am. Bonus fact about split brain patients. This can sometimes lead to an extreme condition called alien hand syndrome. This is where one hand seems to fight the rest of the body and be under the control of another mind completely. In one case, a patient's alien hand even attempted to undress the patient in front of her doctor, while the other hand desperately tried to put her clothes back on. If you've ever seen a film called Doctor Strangelove, you'll have seen Peter Sellers as Doctor Strangelove fighting against his Nazi hand. If you haven't seen the film, you should totally go watch it. Completely recommended. I hope you found this Psych Boost video useful. If you did, I've made more than 140 other psychology videos to help you in your studies, as well as a website full of free resources. If you want to help Psychboost grow, subscribe and like. Also, tell your teacher and anyone else you know who studies psychology about the channel. Thanks for watching. Keep studying.